we're going to talk about photosynthesis. We're going to continue our journey through the chloroplast and really get into the reaction a little bit. Let's get the definition first. The definition of photosynthesis is solar energy. Remember, solar refers to the sun. Think of your solar panels that you might have in a house. It's used to transform inorganic compounds. Remember, inorganic cannot have carbon and hydrogen in it. So in this case, the compounds we're transforming are carbon dioxide and water. We're going to transform them into organic compounds. Remember, that means it has to have carbon and hydrogen in it. Do you recognize that formula? You're right if you said glucose. C6H12O6 is the formula for glucose. We're going to transform the energy from the sun and the inorganic compounds into a type of carbohydrate. The most common one that we refer to is glucose. During this process, the energy from the sun is stored in the energy of the chemical bonds of the sugars. The entire process is controlled by enzymes. We call this a biochemical process. Bio meaning living, chemical, well, we're dealing with chemicals, and it's a process that occurs during our living thing. This whole process of photosynthesis is really the link between living organisms and their environment, transferring energy from the environment into the food chain so that we can start the process of energy transfer from one organism to the next through the energy pyramid, through the food webs. Let's take a little bit, little, little bit of a look at the reaction itself. I wrote out the word equation for the reaction for you and we'll go through that quickly. And, and then we're gonna try and do the chemical reaction with the formulas. So we start off with water and carbon dioxide we're going to need light and chlorophyll. Remember, chlorophyll is found in the chloroplasts. In the end, we're going to make glucose and oxygen. Remember, everything to the right of the arrow are your products. The things to the left of the arrow are your raw materials. I'd like you to pause and try to write the chemical equation. Use the chemical formulas for water, carbon dioxide, glucose, and oxygen. See what you come up with. Now that you've paused, let's see how you did. I'm sure you probably didn't come up with the numbers in front of the formulas. We'll discuss that briefly. But see if your formula is right. See if your equation is right. Water, H2O. Carbon dioxide, CO2. The light and chlorophyll were there for you already. Glucose, C6H12O6. And oxygen, O2. Now why did I put the numbers in? Well. Back during physical science, maybe in seventh or eighth grade, depending on when you did it, you were talking about Newton's laws. And the idea was, was that energy cannot be created or destroyed and matter cannot be created or destroyed. So if we start off with six hydrogen atoms at the beginning of a reaction, at the end of the reaction, we have to have six as well. So in this case, we have water, which has two hydrogens in it. We need six of those water molecules. So if we have six water molecules, that's a total of 12 hydrogens. Luckily enough, that matches my 12 hydrogens at the end. You didn't need to do that part, and you won't necessarily have to memorize it, but I just wanted to explain why they were there. There are two discussion questions I'd like you to think about for this that we'll discuss in further detail. Why are light and chlorophyll written above and below the arrow? Above or below doesn't matter, but why are they written there? Why don't they get written at the beginning of the reaction or at the end? Why above or below the arrow? We've discussed this in the past. The other question I'd like you to think about and try and get the answer to is, where does the plant get the water from? How does it get the water and where is it getting it from? How does it go through the plant? The other one is, where does it get the carbon dioxide from? Think about those, pause, try to write your answers down. We'll discuss them tomorrow. The next thing we're going to talk about are the stages of photosynthesis and really get into the details. Photosynthesis doesn't happen all at once. There are two phases or stages to photosynthesis. They are called the light dependent reactions and some people call them the dark reactions. We're going to give them a few names. Let's go through the first phase though. The first phase has a couple names. Whether you call it the light reactions, the light dependent reactions, are also another fancy name called photolysis. It all means the same thing. If you depend on light, it means you need it. And guess what? This step requires light. The other thing that we can call this is photolysis. Photo means light. And do you remember what lysis means? 
If you remember that lysis from hydrolysis means to break apart, you kind of already know what's going to happen in this reaction. We're going to use light to break something apart. And in this case, we're going to capture the energy from the light, from the sun, in order to split water. What are we going to split water into? We're going to split water into hydrogen and oxygen gas. Where do you think that oxygen gas is going to go? And how's it going to get there? We're going to talk about those answers tomorrow. What is the hydrogen used for? Well, the hydrogen is used in phase two. The hydrogen actually really represents electrons because what happens during the light dependent reactions is that the energy from the sun excites the electrons in the chlorophyll and they start bouncing around and that's what splits the water apart. And that hydrogen is then going to be used to transfer those electrons to the next step. This step happens in the grana and remember the grana are those stacks of thylakoid membranes. Now let's talk about phase two. Phase two of photosynthesis is called the light independent reactions. Well, if you're independent, it means you don't need anybody, or you could do it by yourself. So if we're independent of light, do we need light? Nope, we don't. So the light independent reactions have a couple of other names too. It's also called carbon fixation, the Calvin cycle, or even the dark cycle. So the idea behind this is that they don't require light. It doesn't mean that they can't happen when it's light outside. It's just that they don't need it for the reaction to occur. During the light independent reactions, the hydrogen from that first phase, the light dependent reactions, is going to transfer energy using a carrier called NADP. When the hydrogen is attached, it's going to be called NADPH2. So you might want to write that down, NADPH2. It's going to transfer those hydrogens over to this step because we're going to need them. Because what we're going to do with them is we're going to combine them with carbon dioxide gas. Where do you think that carbon dioxide gas comes from? We talked about it in the last step. I had you think about it a little bit. Hopefully you can remember where it comes from. During this phase, the enzymes are used to transform hydrogen and carbon dioxide into, you've got it, that familiar chemical formula, C6H12O6, glucose. You can see we have the raw materials here. We have H's, we have C's, and we have O's. And if we can combine them in the right quantities, we can make sugars. During this particular reaction, remember we said we didn't need light. Another name for it was carbon fixation. And the reason why it's called carbon fixation is because we're fixing the carbon into something we need. And we need glucose, which we can use later on. The dark reactions, they were called dark reactions because they originally thought they only happened in the dark. It's just because they don't require light. This particular reaction, the light independent reactions occur in the stroma. And remember that's the liquid portion of the chloroplast. So during this reaction, we're going to bring in carbon dioxide gas from the environment. And hopefully you can remember where we got those from. That carbon dioxide is going to come in through the stomates on the underside of the leaf. And we're going to combine that with the hydrogens from the first reaction in order to make our glucose molecule. Glucose can be used for a whole bunch of things. Glucose can be used during cellular respiration to make ATP, or we can use it to make other carbohydrates that the plant happens to need. It could also be stored in the plant as starch if it has extra. So let's take a diagram and see if we can do a bit of a summary of photosynthesis. Now this is a very cartoon drawing of a chloroplast. And what it's attempting to do is to summarize what happens during the two phases of photosynthesis. What comes into the chloroplast are represented by arrows coming in. And what's coming out of the chloroplast are represented by the arrows coming out. What I'd like you to attempt to do is to try to label each of the different parts of this chloroplast that we have. We have an A here, a B here, C labeling this portion or this phase, D an arrow coming out, E showing something going over here, F up top coming into the chloroplast for this particular phase, which is G, and then something coming out labeled H. We're going to come in tomorrow with our completed drawings labeled and we're going to discuss it.